We're redoing our backyard and I'm so excited about it. I wanted to create some garden markers just to make it easier for us to identify the vegetables and herbs that we're going to have in our mixed beds. I wanted to try out a few different styles of garden markers. Let's get started. Reusing your seed packets is a great way to create some garden markers. They're very straightforward. I'm going to be emptying out this brand new package into uh, the same packaging. As you can see, I had actually ripped this one up, so I couldn't tell uh, what all the information was on that particular package. So I just emptied out that old one, or sorry, new one into the old package, and then I've got a brand new seed pack. Uh, you can also get some scrapbook paper. Uh, this one I got from Michael's. I don't know if they carry this anymore, but you can also get some printable seed packages and customize them to your exact needs. I'm going to be using some self laminating sheets as well as some thermal lamination sheets. The self laminating I picked up from Dollar Tree and the thermal I got from Walmart. You can write the information on the back side of the scrapbook paper or the seed package that you print out. The seed package that I have that's brand new from the store has all the information that I need. So I'm gonna laminate that with the thermal lamination. I'm gonna be using the Scotch lamination machine. My kids got this for me for Mother's Day a few years ago. I love it. The only thing is that tray does stick a little bit so I have to fiddle around with that, but otherwise it is a good machine. So I'm gonna heat that up. And while that's heating, I'm gonna go ahead and use the self laminating sheets that I got from Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to pick one out here and you can see there's instructions on how to use it. It turns out I'm able to get two of the scrapbook paper onto this self laminating sheet. So just to let you know, I have not used these outdoors, so I do not know how well they're going to hold up. This is an experiment for me. I'm going to lay them out onto the lamination sheet and follow all the instructions that are given. If you stay tuned and to uh, chime in on my community tab, I will give an update on some things that I am experimenting with to let you know how they are holding up. I do not know how the image is going to hold up in the sunshine and I don't know how well the adhesive on these self laminating sheets will hold up outside in the heat. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and again, like I said, I'm following the instructions. It does say it's easier if you use something firm to smooth it out like a ruler or some kind of a straight stick and then smooth that out. I'm being extra cautious about how I, well I'm sealing all the edges as well as in between each of the cards. So I'm taking a bone folder and I'm just running over each of the edge to make sure there's really good adhesion. Working on a flat surface, I'm going to be using a ruler and a craft knife and I'm going to cut in between each of the cards and then you're going to have to trim off any of the excess lamination as needed. So these can be sharp and they can give you a little cut. So I am just going to round off the cup corners to prevent any little accident that may happen. I don't want to get a paper cut because this happened to me before. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You could try dry erase on the back side of those, but I'm, again, I'm not sure how well that'll hold up outside. So now for the original seed packet, I'm going to put it into place with my self laminating, sorry, not the self, the thermal laminating sheet. And then you want to follow the instructions on your packaging for your lamination sheets, as well as for the machine that you are going to be using. I needed to use um, the higher heat setting, so I adjusted things accordingly. And then you just have to put it into place and watch the machine laminated. It's actually kind of fun to watch. I uh, decided to run this through my machine two times just to make sure that it stays together really well. And it also makes the piece sturdier. So I did have to go in and trim off the excess and I also rounded off the corners of this particular marker as well. 
I'm hoping this one will hold together really well. It should. I know I've used seed packages outside and they do last the season. And that is just straight up seed package, no protection. So I'm really hoping that these ones will hold up well. I'm going to use some craft sticks along with some Gorilla silicone sealant and some hot glue. And I'm going to attach the craft stick to the bottom. The silicone sealant will give the long-term hold and the hot glue will give that instant hold and the two of them work well together. I apply a little weight onto them while they set up and then that's it. They're ready to be used outside in your garden. I want to try a fun and creative variation of a garden marker so I'm going to be using a wood slice. I'm going to add some white craft paint to the top. It can just be any craft paint. This is going to get all sealed up. I wanted to do a decoupage pattern on here and I find that if you paint your background white the pattern of the napkin or tissue paper you're using will show through better. So I'm going to use some floral napkins. I've got two styles, one that I got from Ninny's napkins and another that I got from a local dollar store. Use whatever you have. I thought the uh, flowers would be really pretty for an outdoor garden. I decided to use the one that I got from the dollar store here. Uh, I did cut it down to size just to make it a little bit more easy to manage. So once you have that all cut out, I like to use a little bit of tape. It can be washi tape or it can be uh, masking tape, whatever. And that makes it easier to pull off the layers of tissue that's underneath. Now, just again, just to warn you, I do not know how light fast a napkin is going to be outside. I have used tissue paper outside before and the color does fade, but you can still see the pattern. I'm going to use outdoor Mod Podge for this. You can pick that up at any craft store as well as online. You can go ahead and give a coat. It's quite thick. So I'm going to add a layer and then I am going to go ahead and add my napkin going to go ahead and press that down into place being gentle to smooth out any of the wrinkles and then I'm going to go over top and give another coat of the decoupage glue. So I'm being careful to get right up to the edge and then I'm going to set it aside and allow it to dry well. Once it's dry you can take a sanding block and run that along the edge of the wood slice and that will create a nice clean edge to remove the remainder of the napkin that you've got left behind here. It works really well. Just an added tip you may want to add an extra touch of decoupage around the edge. I'm in Cricut Design Space right now as I wanted to create a final decal to go on top of my wood slice. So I'm just going to insert just a basic circle and I'm going to use the basic text option and I'm going to write up a bunch of herbs or plants or flowers, whatever you're going to be using these for for your garden. And I'm going to size it down to fit on top of the circle so I know exactly the size I need for for each wood slice that I'm using. I did need to adjust the circle size and you can do that accordingly. I have this image file saved for you over in Cricut Design Space. That link will be down in the video description box below. I'm using white permanent vinyl. It is weatherproof and it is fade resistant. So I've got this little scrap end. This is a perfect project to use all those vinyl scraps that we have. So I'm just going to trim off that end piece. I will be using the green mat for this project. This is smart vinyl, but since it's such a small piece, I thought it would be easiest for me to do this on the mat. So I'm going to just line up the vinyl on my mat. I am using the side that's got the inches. That just makes it easier to lay out your design as you're cutting it out, prepping it all. I like to do all my work on the computer and then I switch over to my device to to do the work on the machine. So you can see I opened up the file and you can adjust things accordingly. If you go into the layers tab, you can click on each word and hide the ones you do not want to use. 
So I went ahead and hid everything, including my circle for the wood slice, and I've just left with the word rosemary. So I'm just gonna demonstrate one of these for you. So I went ahead and I pressed make it and follow all the prompts on your device until you have your word all cut out. I'm gonna just quickly remove the vinyl off of the mat, and then I like to take my scissors and cut out the individual word. It's hard to see there, but it did cut out. It actually cuts really, really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out, and then I'm gonna get my weed it and get my transfer paper. Now, don't do like what I did and rush through this. I accidentally lifted this up too quickly and I lifted up the Y. That was my only clumsy mistake. So I did have to go back in there and adjust that Y back onto the sheet, but it turned out fine. You could use that little piece there as maybe some kind of a stencil. You could try it out. It's not, I'm not sure how well that would work since this is permanent vinyl. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my transfer paper now and I'm going to transfer the word onto my wood slice. Now, I did make the mistake and not seal up the edges enough on my wood slice. So some of the tissue paper, or sorry, the napkin did lift a little bit. Uh, so you wanna make sure you've got really, really good adhesion between the wood slice and your napkin so none of that lifts. I ended up sealing it all up though. So with some matte varnish here, I am using the Deco Art brand. You can get that online or in craft stores, but you can use any varnish that you like. You just wanna make sure you seal the entire wood slice. This is going outside into the weather. So you want to make sure this stays in good shape. Again, I don't know how long this is going to last. It might be a season, maybe it'll be longer. I'm going to test this out. Stay tuned again in my community tab to stay up to date on how all these markers are doing. I love it, it's so pretty and it would make a wonderful gift set. I foraged these branches on a nature walk. You wanna select some branches that are really, really sturdy and don't break easily. I'm gonna trim these ones down and I'm also gonna remove all the little nubs and little bits of branches that are coming off. You can see how strong this branch is. I did struggle a little bit cutting it and that's what you want. You want these to last as long as possible. Now, keep in mind, this is a natural element, so they will slowly decompose. So keep that in mind when you are creating some of these. I'm gonna take a craft knife and I'm just going to remove a patch of the bark. You wanna make sure you are moving the blade away from you for safety, of course. I'm trying to make a little patch on the branch as flat as possible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to work on this until I get a workable space. So I'm just gonna practice the font that I wanna use. I'm just writing out the word carrots and I'm going to go ahead and try this small regular writing as, long, as well as all caps and I decided to go with the all caps. So I typically do this in pencil, but I couldn't find my sharp pencil. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna use my pen to pre-draw this out or write this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and write the word carrots on my branch. You want to try and center it the best you can. There are little tricks that you can do to write evenly across a space by starting with uh, with your middle letters and working outwards from that but I just went for it. I'm going to use my wood burning tool and I'm using the sharp pointy tip to burn in my words. This does take some practice and some patience so just take your time when you're doing this. I got my wood burning tool from Michael's. I used their coupon a few years ago and I treated myself to this tool and I've been wanting to learn how to use it more and more but I'm finding that just sticking to the basics for practice because my hand was not very steady with this but I did my best and this one actually turned out really good. I really like these. I created two of them. I just did carrots and radish. So I'm just going to trim off the bottom end just to create a sharp pointy tip to make it easier to place them down into the ground. I went ahead and used my craft knife just to help create more of a point, but that was it. 
these are done. They were so easy and so affordable and such a fun and unique piece for your garden. So this is going to be a fun little twist on a marker. I'm using this tin frame that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm using the image that comes with it as my template to cut out a piece of birch bark. I like to forage birch bark as well. I'm just removing any of the loose pieces off the bark and you also want to make sure it's a thickness that's going to fit inside your frame. So I'm just going to test that out right now. And this one fit perfectly and it was just the right size as well. Remove any of the debris that may be preventing it from going in smoothly. And that was it. This was a nice clean piece of bark. I'm gonna go ahead and put that into place. Now, this one's gonna be a little different. This could be used as a plant marker, but I decided to create it as more of maybe an indoor plant tag for now, I'm going to be using this stamp that I had in my stash and I'm using Stays On Ink. This is a good permanent ink and I'm going to go ahead and ink my stamp up and I'm going to press that into place. I'm wiggling just a little bit so it gets onto the birch bark really well. My birch bark is a nice flat piece, so that is key. To get it flat, you can moisten it and then put it under some heavy flat pieces. You can go ahead and seal this all up with some varnish as well as seal up any of the any of the gaping edges with your silicone sealant if you're concerned about anything getting in that. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere a craft stick for my steak. I'm going to again use the silicone sealant as well as some hot glue, put it that into place. Again, run some beads of silicone all around the edge of your birch bark to help keep it all secure and solid. And that was it. This is a really fun plant steak. I could see it definitely being used inside or outside in some fun planters. I had these short spoons in my stash for a very long time. I cannot remember where I got them, but you can use some regular size spoons and just trim them down as needed. I'm using Arteza Outdoor Acrylic Paints and I'm going to use green, yellow, and red for this particular project. I'm gonna paint each spoon one different color. Uh, I should have gone with an orange one and you'll see why here in a bit, but in the meantime, I am going to give two to three co coats of my outdoor acrylic paint on each spoon. You could use some outdoor house paint if that's what you have, or any paint that you know will hold up well outside. You could also use craft paint, but then I would seal it up well. I'm in Cricut Design Spaces again, and I'm going to select um, an image search by doing some specific searches of vegetables. Here I'm showing you an example of searching a strawberry, and you wanna save your images, add them to your canvas, and then you wanna just size them accordingly. So I've got it all made up for you, again, in Cricut Design Space for you to use. Follow the links in the description box below. I'm using some smart vinyl again, but I'm going to trim off this scrap. I'm using black. Again, it is weather resistant and fade resistant, which is awesome. I'm going to follow all the prompts on my device screen. Again, hiding the images I am not using. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut out some different vegetables on the vinyl. Of course, if you don't like any of the vegetables that I have selected on that particular file then you could just do an image search and just change things up according to the use that you have for your garden so I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this particular image I found that the line art images actually work the best for this project you can see how well this carrot looks on the backside of this spoon I think it looks so sharp. So I went ahead and added both some solid and line art images for you to use on that particular file. So I'm gonna seal this all up with a couple of coats of my varnish. I wanna make sure that this stays in place. Um, outside, it gets quite hot where I live, so I'm not sure how well the 
adhesive will hold up in the heat but I'm going to go ahead apply the varnish all over this piece and then that is it they are ready to be used I think again it would make a great gift set for anybody to use For this next project, I'm using my Xtool M1 laser cutting machine. I've got links for you down below to check out if you'd like. I had to ventilate this out in my garage because of the smoke. I am in the Cric or Xtool design space and I'm using this free design from designbundles.com. I'll have the link for you down below. I uploaded it into the Xtool design space and then I am going to be using this wood slice that I got from Dollar Tree. I removed the string and I loaded it into the machine. When you close the lid it takes a picture of what's inside the machine and then you can just the image accordingly to fit on whatever substrate you are cutting into. Again, I am cutting into wood and then I am going to make the adjustments, follow all the prompts on the computer according to whichever laser cutting machine you are using. I need to press my blue button to get it going and you can see how the machine is cutting it out. So this is sped up a little bit, but it cuts really well into this wood that I got from Dollar Tree. You can see it's smoking here. So that is the reason why you need to ventilate outside. So I'm going to finish that up. You can see how well these cut out. You can need to clean them up accordingly. I think these turned out great and they're so, so fun. I wanted to try using some vintage whitewash effect from Deco Art just on a few of these. I just wanted to see how well this would look and I really liked the effect so I left some plain and I'm just using a rag to apply the vintage whitewash on the other few. I gave it about two coats of the whitewash and then I set them aside and allowed them to dry. You can see the difference between them. Now for the ones that I didn't whitewash, I'm just going to go ahead and use my varnish and I'm going to seal these all up again because this is wood. I don't know how long they will last outside without being all sealed up. So I just wanted to be proactive and try to help keep these last for the season. So I'm going to go ahead and seal both of them up. They turned out really well. I think this is such a pretty set and I want to thank Design Bundles for providing this for free. These are going to be quick and easy garden markers. I got these chalkboard markers from the dollar store as well as some paint pens that I picked up from the craft store as well as dollar store. I really like this color factory one. It was the only paint white paint marker that I had in my stash but it works really well. I got this from my local dollar store. You might be able to find them at Dollar Tree. You'll have to have a look. So all I'm going to do is just write out some words onto the chalkboard little markers and then you want to make sure that you seal them up with some varnish. Again I am using my Deco Art matte varnish and I'm going to give three coats on this one because uh, there is a lot of wood exposed on this one so I typically gave all my projects about three coats of the varnish. But that was it. You just seal them up and they're ready to use and I think these turned out so well. I have a ton more garden ideas in this video for you right here so you want to check that out. Let me know your favorite project down below. I want to thank you all so much for joining me today and we'll see you the next one. Take care. Bye.